It's Charlie Brown. Let Mr. J explain. <laughs> Pip, hello! Hey, it's Mr. J. And today we're going to look a little deeper at everybody's favorite lovable loser, that blockhead Charlie Brown. Now, for those of you that like to look a little deeper at things, well, let's just take a look at some of this Charlie Brown stuff here. Of course, you're familiar with the Charlie Brown Christmas. It's the great pumpkin Charlie Brown. And then we go into these other titles. Books like, What's It All About, Charlie Brown? Or even the hauntingly titled, What Have We Learned, Charlie Brown? For Remembrance Day and Veterans Day. Well, that sort of shows that, of course, Charlie Brown and Peanuts, when they debuted on October 2nd, 1950, looked a little different, and it was the first comic strip to deal with uh, melancholy, loneliness, those things we all feel. Unlike other newspaper strips, which uh, usually formed a gag or tried to give you a chuckle, Peanuts did that, but you also had a sense, an innate sense, that Charles Schultz, the writer-author, was looking for something deeper. And through the years, he explored many different things. It's actually been said that uh, perhaps Charlie Brown was Charles Schultz, an alter ego. Is that true? Well, yes and no. He's been a little coy about that. In different biographies, this was an excellent one, by the way, highly recommended, and the new controversial one by David Michaelis is extremely melancholy. Charles Schultz talks about how his personality was somewhat divided amongst three of his most, or actually four of his most uh, cherished characters. Charlie Brown, obviously, reflected his uh, his feelings of low self-esteem and losing. Linus would be Charles Schultz's side of whimsical questions and just interesting philosophies. Schroeder was his dedication to his craft and Schroeder sort of snubbing Lucy was apparently drawn from his first wife who would come into the studio trying to talk to him. He was hard at work. Sadly his first marriage ended. Maybe again some parallels in the strip. And of course Snoopy was Charles Schultz's happy side, his uh, fun-loving, crazy, wild dancing side of course, which he had as well. Now it's often speculated since the Peanuts characters always remained as kids, what would happen if they grew up? Well, Charles Schultz did another strip called It's Only a Game and we can only speculate that perhaps characters like this may have been a possible adult version of Charlie Brown. Note the resemblance. Also for a church magazine. He did other comics of kids as teenagers. Sort of similarities here. We can see the face. Perhaps Brown as a teenager can be imagined there. These weren't officially Charlie Brown and his friends, but they were done by Schultz, so you can only sort of guess. And of course, Charlie Brown's themes. He could never kick that football. He could never fly that kite. He could never win that baseball game. He could never win the hand of the red-haired girl. Actually, in real life, there was a little red-haired girl in Charles Schultz's life, and that unrequited love, of course, fueled the sadness of Charlie Brown for 50 years. Charles Schultz died on February 12, 13, 2000. His strip lasted 50 years, and he died on the very eve that his last strip was published. Actually, the eve of Valentine's Day, the loneliest day of the year for Charlie Brown. So here's to you, Charles Schultz. I hope wherever you are, you're kicking that football, rounding those bases for a home run, flying a kite, and the little redhead girl is by your side. for On the Job. Rachel, what's happening this week? Well, Chris has taken us to the Annapolis Valley. He's going to Camp Aldershot to do some tough military training. It's the first of a two-part series. Thanks guys, we're in Kenfield, Nova Scotia at Camp Aldershot, which is a military training facility. And well, let's see what they got in store for us. Well today, Chris, we're going to uh, teach you how to repel from the 